2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Head of School of Education at the University of Newcastle in the studio. Good morning. Hi, Todd. Good morning. Rio 2016 in full swing. Are you a fan of the Olympics? Absolutely. This is phenomenal. I think it reminds us of how our young people are inspirational. There's so many distressing news issues from Nice to Paris to Brussels to Dallas and ISIS that it looks as if the world has all these problems. I think what the Olympics show is there's a lot of young people going out and just striving for the best and I think we're all invigorated by that. Have you got a favorite event? You know, I really like the classic track and field events. I think the 100 meter is the purest event, whether you're barefoot or with a pair of shoes, let's go at it one-on-one -on -one down the track. And so I think it is the ultimate, although Michael Phelps is a pretty special athlete. 20, 23? 23 23, 23? 23. 23 gold medals. And, and someone asked me the question the other day, they said, has he won any other medal? And <laughs> yeah, he won a silver just the <laughs> other day, and he, no disappointment, but I think he was a little disappointed. And Michael's also transformed himself. He had suicide uh, contemplations just a couple years ago, went into rehab for some alcohol abuse. In fact, a couple months ago, he didn't know if he could swim a lap. So to have him come back and win just shows the power of transforming all of our lives. When we get down, I use a motto, Todd, is it's not about falling down in life, it's about how you get up. And Michael Phelps is an example of getting up. You'd probably agree, when you see Michael Phelps walk into the pool, there is just an air. And you, you kind of feel sorry for the other swimmers. They are elite athletes. Yeah. They are the best of the best of the best. But you can see their body language when they walk in alongside Michael Phelps, that they're thinking, anyone else? Why, why couldn't he have a runny nose today? Why does he have to be in the pool? So <laughs> he's amazing. amazing. He's there at winning time. Okay, now a lot's been happening in the world of education and NAPLAN back in the news again and uh, some concerns that uh, the results are a little bit flat. What's yeah, over been the last, happening? Last two weeks or so, the NAPLAN results came out for this past year and those are the tests that are given of Australian young people in years three, five, seven and nine of literacy and numeracy it includes traditional and writing assessments and they're pretty good baseline for basic skills. So it's not a bad test, it's the best we have. It's probably not enough for what we really need for a 21st century learning style but they are pretty good results. They actually end up a little flatter than others might have expected they might have uh, resulted in by now. What were the expectations? Expectations are continued growth till 100% of our students have actually mastered the basic skills. In the world we are in today, you would hope that everybody in literacy and numeracy at the minimal level would get there, because what else are you going to do if you don't have those skills? Reading and writing skills, right. the, the basics of life. The trouble is, it's easy now to double down on blaming teachers and schools and the problems of uh, society on teachers for not getting those skills done. It's a little more complex, so I thought we might sort that out a bit. Yeah, let's dig a little bit deeper. Yeah. So first of all, the metrics of NAPLAN, which even the Department of Education that uh, helps develop and the testing makers that help administer, uh, would say the metrics, and this is psychometrics deeper than you and I have the knowledge base for, it's actually designed not to have massive increases or decreases, it's probably steady growth, so a little bit plus or minus is the natural result. It may or may not indicate anything other than what they've expected. So it's all how the test is set up, you know, we can rig a test to almost give us anything we want. So in fact, flat results is probably about what the people who designed the test would have expected. Would there be concerns if there was a spike in that situation? Yeah, it's probably not designed for a spike, but here's some other reasons why I think that the test results may be misleading. First of all, they measure a narrow bandwidth. The current literacy and numeracy is almost an old skill. We still need those skills, but the new skills are really the soft skills of the past. Cooperation, critical thinking, problem solving, global mindedness, this uh, understanding of cultural competence and in that also the technology savvy that liter that literacy of digital literacy is just as important we don't assess those so if you look at what NAPLAN measures it measures sort of a 20th century set of skills we now have a 21st century set of skills we're not measuring a lot of schools have moved to those a critical thinking problem solving cr uh, digital literacy so we don't really know whether we're actually improving or not because we're not really assessing the bigger broth of what we're teaching. John, do you think parents have an understanding of what NAPLAN is designed to do or has it just been given a bad rap over the last couple of years and, and, and the real reason for it is not getting through to grassroots? It might be that we uh, haven't done a good job of that, but I think the families that are involved in the entrepreneurism and innovation age understand and may even send their kids to schools that are doing some different things, project-based learning, some of the 21st century things we've talked about in the past. The other level of concern is that we do have an increasing and widening gap in our society between those that are doing well and not. And in the last few weeks, the reports coming out of the various institutes across Australia show that 40% of the population has no wealth, meaning they have a net zero or debt, and 15% own 40% of the wealth. 
When you talk about that, that actually means the expectations young people have coming to school are clouded with under-education, under unemployment, and kind of a malaise that's hit so many families who don't feel optimistic about the future. So NAPLAN results could, in effect, show the widening gap in our society between the have and have-nots. Which is interesting because that's not what it was designed to show. And I think that's the urgency I would take is the number of young people who are in year seven and year eight who are still year, reading at year four and year five show a failure to get early childhood right, a failure to get parent and adult education right. The dis disintegration of TAFE is in fact a crisis where we need to reinvest in, in the trades and in, in technical education because it's really jobs for the future, as well as the understanding of what children need when they need support. Any child that's been through toxic stress, meaning that somewhere in their life they've been cold, hungry, abused, uh, lonely, or under care in some way, the cognitive effect of that puts them at risk of their literacy and numeracy skills. So teachers aren't responsible for that. We all are as a society. And the reality of it is kids don't bounce back as quickly as adults do in some situations. Their, their right. situations may change. Dad or mum may get a job. There may be money coming into the house eventually. But it's not going to be a, an instant U-turn, is it? Exactly. And so the solution of the government appears to be they'll put a graduation test, a literacy and numeracy graduation test on kids. So we'll have three, five, seven, nine, and graduation test. That'll just really sort of double down on what we already know. And those are the kids that come in a little behind, tend to stay up behind. Those that are ahead end up doing fine. That doesn't get it right. So we need alternative kinds of assessment for the kind of skills we actually want, which are the kind of skills you have to do every day to turn everything on to make you know, 2NUR run. Mm. So we stick with NAPLAN, it's, it's here for the long term? NAPLAN is one basic skill assessment that's fine. It's just very limited in what it actually assesses. We've got to add to it. So I'm not saying it's a problem. We just don't have the whole problem scoped and we're not testing all the right things. Another story for another day. Yeah. Professor John Fischetti, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, thanks for fun. letting us in on your thoughts on the Olympic Games, oh, which thanks. is wonderful. I'll, I'll let you get back to the television. And we'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, more meetings, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, that's the excuse I use for the 100 <laughs> meter final, but that's all right. Professor John Fischetti, Head of School of Education at the University of Newcastle. Two at URFM. 103.7